I was just um, wanted to ask you some questions that, that kind of give uh, LSU fans a broad understanding of how amazing your career was, sir. Um, yeah, for, for, first of all, the Miami native, what led you to LSU? Um, track and field. Um, me and my best friend wanted to run track for either LSU or Virginia Tech. Uh, unfortunately, my best friend ended up going to a junior college up in Minnesota, and I went to a junior college in Mississippi. So, we, you know, or whatever like that. I ended up going to LSU. He ended up didn't go no. He didn't go nowhere. He, um, he just stayed and got his education. So, yeah, that's that's how that played out. And you were in a large group of Miami area LSU Tiger legends. Like, there's so many LSU legends coming from that Miami area. What What's in the water down there, sir? It's, it's, it's like Miami, Dade, and Louisiana produce all the best football talent. Man, you know what? Uh, it's, it's a pure life. It's pure life. You know, uh, and, and some of that spring water, you know, it's up a hill. I grew up drinking several hills of water. Um, so, so over here, it's kind of like, you know, um, you know, when you go outside and you see a water hose and you go drink water from behind somebody's house. Yeah. That's, that's how this ever here's water used to taste. So I used to be on that back in the days, but just recently, you know, I've been on the purified water. So I think it's just the water and it's just the drive and determination that we have in Miami to... Make it out of Miami. You're too great. You know, um, I'm walking right now. It's okay. To, uh, to have uh, people remain, remember you and, and know what you did, you know. Just try not to get them to forget about you. Well, and sir, I don't. I, no one's going to be forgetting about you soon enough. Um, you went off at some Mississippi <laughs> State Junior Colleges. Uh you you were there at Pearl River for a few years. Um, yeah. You were you were ranked the number eight junior college receiver in America in two thousand six. Yeah. And you transferred to LSU in two thousand seven. What? Yeah. Coming from a junior college pathway, how did your two thousand seven arrival happen at LSU? How, like, how were you recruited, Demetrius? Oh man, um, I was recruited by um, Coach Todd Monkey. Uh, I. I He's at, I think he's at Georgia now. He's somewhere at a big time school that's winning right now. What was his um, name? You said Todd, called Todd Monkey. Really? Let me look. This yeah. Up. Wow. He's on, I think he's at Georgia or something. As the office coordinator or something like that. He got them rocking. Um, so, because Todd Monkey recruited me, and, and um, next thing you know, he left. Because he had another job at Oklahoma State. So after he got that job there at Oklahoma State, that's when Coach DJ McCarthy came in. Coach DJ McCarthy came in and <laughs> Coach DJ, that's my man now. That's my coach. That's one of the favorite coaches, man. Him and Coach Coach Hat from Gene College. Um Coach Coach um Coach DJ, he recruited me when I was in high school. Um, high school only played one year of high school football. Um, and he came and he recruited me. He was at UCF then. And when he came, he started, uh, he got mad because I didn't have the university grade. I didn't have the grade to go to the university. Only had grades to go to a junior college. So he got mad and threw my highlight tape on the wall. And um, what do you know, lo and behold, he became, you know, my coach again once I made to LSU. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's just a, a crazy story, but uh, it's an exciting one at that. Uh, I got to LSU. Um, I got that late. I didn't come that summer because uh, I didn't come that summer because uh, – because of, um, I didn't come to some because I still had to take some classes. Oh, okay. Well, so after I, 
after um after after I took some classes, I was able to go. I had to take um I had to take some math, a math class. Me and math didn't get along too well. Me neither. <laughs> so I had to I had to take a math class and uh, algebra. And once I passed it, um I got into the LSU like like the end of the the beginning of fall. I got there in August. Wow. Um, and when I got there, they wasn't trying to let me play because they had I'm not trying to hang up. Um they they let me play because uh they let me play because on the field, I guess he didn't catch the ball or whatever. So, so it opened up a door for you. And yeah, so it opened up the door for me to um become a, a you know a key player. So you know once that happened, once that happened, that's when um. That's when um the bird man came alive. <laughs> uh, I was uh I, I started starting that Auburn game and yes. um man I just I just went off. Um I, I couldn't help <laughs> because yeah. uh I wanted to play so bad and, and being that I wanted to play so bad, um that's how the the, the, the tenacity the the tenacity that I have, it had me really want to um, ball out. Oh, and you did. You balled out throughout 2007 and 2008, Demetrius. I mean, you scored against every big opponent throughout that season. In every big game, whenever LSU yeah. had their backs against the wall, you responded. And and you were a part of one of the greatest ever LSU Tigers teams. And we even lost two games. What uh -huh. what made that 2007 team so special? And when did you first recognize the vibe around that team? What made it so special, man, we was all together, man. The, the team, everybody depending on each other. Everybody wanted to see, you know, each other succeed. So it was it was a it was a it was a camaraderie. It was like, man, the receivers picked up the receiver, the receivers picked up the quarterback, the the cornerback picked up the receivers, and like you know, vice versa. So it was just a, a, a exciting year. And um and if I can turn back the hands of time I I want I want to take go back. You know, uh this is togetherness, man. Like I don't know how much they explain about it, just the togetherness we, we all display. Because we was we all was one. One for all. And and uh, we made up a song when we was in on camp. Uh, hey, 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 goodbye. Nah, 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 nah. No, not that one. There was another one we was like, uh, it was our last day of on camp, um, our senior season. And we had came up with a song for um for 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 the season of ending, and it was it was awesome. So man, um, I, I really don't know what else to say about that besides that we was together. It's okay, sir. Because really, I mean, that's that's the number one thing I see from all championship teams is they they're unbreakable in the foxhole. They're such great friends. <laughs> True. We were. We were. Who were you closest to on that squad? Who was your closest friends? The closest friends are uh, uh, Tyson Jackson. Me and him was close. Um, yes. Um, Ryan Perlou, that That's my boy. Yes. Uh, um, 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 uh, Derek Beckwood. Marlon Favorite. Uh, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of other guys that, you know, I was still cool with and, um, uh, they was my homies and I know right now today, me and, uh, me and Ryan Perlow still play tight. That's my boy. Um, I was trying to get back to Louisiana so I could, you know, hang with him. Um, 
I really like his vibe, man. He 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 funny. Uh, I got a, a funny story to tell you about, man. Um, uh, <laughs> yes. he was uh he he was practicing. He was in the game one day, and uh, he didn't hit me on one of the pass plays. And I got mad with him. I was like, man, I'm wide open, man. And he don't come to the ball, man. I ain't come to come at him like that. But he seen it. And then next thing you know, man, he stung me on the next pass. Boom. <laughs> Uh, and I told him, I said, the SEC championship game, man, you did that on purpose because you didn't want to, you, you didn't want me to win MVP. You think it's slick because <laughs> he overthrew the ball. I told him, I say, I say, Ryan, you throwing the ball, bro. Just give him a little bit of air, but put it out there. This man put it, he, he didn't give me no air, but he put it out there. So... <laughs> So it was, uh, it was, man, like I said, it was an exciting season. Uh, uh, what, what else question you asked about? I forgot that fast talking so much. You're okay, sir. Uh, the Auburn game. Could you yeah, sense the, the supreme game. pressure of that moment on, on the whole team, on you, in, the, in, the, in, the, in Death Valley? Could you, could you just cut that with a knife? Oh, the Auburn game. Uh, many people never forget that because that was that was a game for the ages right there. Well, that was one of them because yeah. LSU got so many games of the ages. But that was one of them. But to to answer you, man, I, I, I didn't sense that. I didn't know that that was going to happen. I didn't know that Matt was going to throw me the ball. Um, when he threw me the ball, man, it was like, it was like, oh, snap, the ball coming. And I had to make a play. Um, I thought he was going to throw the ball to Ernie Doucette because, you know, Ernie Doucette was an All-American receiver. He was, a, he, you know, he was hands down number one receiver. So I didn't think he was going to, you know, throw me, throw me the ball. But um, I looked back, and there's the ball. So I just made a play. And I, I, I didn't know that the – I didn't know what time it was, how much time was left on the clock. I didn't. Um, I heard the crowd go wild. <laughs> when the crowd went wild, that was like, man, that was awesome. That was awesome, man. But I, I wanted to go run up in the stands, but I didn't want them to call it back. <laughs> and back, <laughs> back then, they probably would have, knowing how stupid right. the, the flags right. were back then. Right, right. I didn't want them to call it back. I, I, you know, because I've seen a couple of the guys when they score touchdowns, they go get a fan high five and all that stuff. So I was like, man, imagine if I was the – when I caught that, I would have ran up to the dog on stands and did some stuff like that. They would call that back. Bro, but, um, you would have been crowd surfed throughout <laughs> Death Valley from, from, from that section across yeah. the entire stadium. You literally could have been president that night in Louisiana, sir. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, um, but you know what happened that night? Then what? I went to my dorm room and I went to sleep. Really? Because I, I was so exhausted. Yeah, uh, I went and I went to sleep. Wow. That shows how much – I mean, that catch – you know how much LSU loves to beat Auburn. You you saw how much it killed us this year just to lose to Auburn. And, yeah. and, and you catch that at the last second. Did you realize you'd be an LSU legend forever after that play? Did you before you passed out that night? Uh, to be honest with you, no. Know, I, I, I just thought it was just uh, one regular game. Yeah. I thought it's... it was just a, a regular game, man. Like, that's like like it was for the rest of the season. Like exactly. I played like I, I wanted you know, I wanted to win. I played like, man, I'm the best on the field and ain't nobody gonna stop me. But as we had to play as a team. One hundred percent. That's how I felt. In the Florida yeah. game. The, the Florida game in 2007, you made another huge touchdown catch in that one. A tight game that will probably forever be one of the most ultimate classics of the of the LSU-Florida rivalry. You know, Hester yeah. Hester getting fourth down after fourth down, Tebow in tears at the final whistle. What was the atmosphere like? I, I, I get goosebumps just talking about it, and I was only 15 at the time. You were there. <laughs> uh-huh. That game there, man, that's when um, Can't See Me came out. 
and on the first day that you can't see me. Yes. Um, I scored a touchdown and waved my hand to, on my face. I was like, everybody thought I was doing a 50 cent and get money. No, I was doing a, you can't see me to the DB. Like, man, you can't see me, man. No, no. So, um, that, that game now was crazy, man. My shouts out to my boy Jacob Heston, man, because he runs hard. He runs hard. I, I, I like the way he runs. Um, he gets the job done. Um, I just, I don't, I don't have too much to say about that, uh, you know, that, that, um, that Florida game because, like, we actually, like, as he was like, we were number one. Uh, wait, was we number one? I think so. I think, I think we were number one and Florida was number seven or something. Or maybe Florida was number seven and, 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 and it was number one and we were trying to, we were trying to be number one. That's what it was. We were trying to be number one. And, um, and man, I tell you, <laughs> that was one of the glory days, man. I, I loved that one. I love the Florida game. Um, man, that just bring back a whole lot of memories, man. <laughs> this is perfect. Then this is what we want. We want you to. I want you to feel good. You know, I, I, you did so much for us, sir. And you, you know, we already have said you caught two of the biggest touchdowns of that yeah. season. Um, the, the 2007 season was intense, and you were continuously big for the Tigers. You caught. Two touchdowns in that triple overtime loss to Arkansas, our yeah. second loss of the season. When that game ended, did you feel as if LSU were were now out of the title picture? Yes, I thought it was out. I thought it was over for us. Oh yeah, I thought it was over for us. But um, while I was on the uh, plane, you know, we heard um, we heard that it was like the um, plane. We heard that um, somebody had lost. Yeah, Missouri, Texas Tech. Um, yeah, a bunch of them somebody, lost. Somebody had lost, and when they lost, that's when um, that's when um, that's when um, that's when that's when I got happy. And got hot. <laughs> um, and the plane had went down like it was about to crash. How you doing? Yeah. And, the SEC title game winner versus Tennessee that you had with your boy Ryan Perlew at quarterback. What was that entire scenario like, Demetrius? You got a backup quarterback trying to win the SEC. You're not knowing, you know, whether the title is still on the table or if you're going to be playing in the Sugar Bowl or what. What, what was that like with, with Ryan, with, with all that, with the SEC title? What was that like? Oh, man, that was – that was so much fun because um, that was so much fun because um, that was so much fun because um, because <sighs> how long time? That was so much fun because um, uh, the guys, the guys, uh, Ricky Jean, Francois came inside the um. Uh, came inside the, the locker room and uh, when he came in the locker room, you know, he um he said, Man, we we, we need to tighten up, we need blah blah blah. Do this and do that, blah, blah, blah. And then I think you know, you know, we all got hype. Everybody got hype. Uh and 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 John Zena caught that interception and you know, when he caught that interception and score, like, yeah, it's over. We're going to win. We're going to win. But uh, the atmosphere was so much, so crazy, you know. So when I scored a touchdown, you see me doing a bird sign, yeah. a bird man sign for, you know, for my last name. I don't know why many people thought that was a gang sign, but that was, uh, that was a clear sign at, at Sam Bird, you know. Um, that's why, is my, is my family. that's why I'm glad we're doing this interview, sir. So then, you know, if there's that one uh, dummy from from 20 years ago who's thinking that you're doing gang signs and stuff, right. we can tell them the truth here. And, and, I mean, 
how could anyone think that, that was a gang sign? I, I remember that. Right. I remember that talk, and I was like, no, he's doing the bird, man. It's pretty, it's pretty right. obvious. Right. So I said bird gang because of, you know, my mom, my little sister, you know, my, my two nieces, and my brother. You know, that's bird gang right there, um, the bird gang. And everybody else who had my last name, it was the bird gang. I never talked about no talk on gang or nothing like that. Because I'm, I'm, that ain't me. No. I'm not gang affiliated. That ain't me. No, that's not you. I mean, I've always known that about you, man. You're, you've, you've been a straight shooter. You're, you're a community guy. Everybody, exactly. Everybody I talk to around the LSU community has always said, man, you got to interview Demetrius Bird. You got to get him on the phone. You got to get that guy to talk because he was one of the best LSU receivers. And he did, you know, you didn't play at LSU too long. You only played at their LSU for two seasons. Yeah, so we, two o- seasons. we only got to see you for such a short little bit of time before you went and played for the Chargers, man. Yeah, and, that's why people forget about me. Well, no one's going to be forgetting about you after this. Yeah. We're going to make sure of that. And, uh, you played a hugely unselfish role in that 2008 uh, BCS title game where we beat Ohio State for the title. You, yeah. You were constantly freeing up space for, for Richard Dixon's touchdowns. Yes. What did that feel like to hoist a national title, sir? Man, to hoist a national to hold a crystal ball up, that was awesome, man. I loved that. To hold a crystal ball up was awesome. To kiss it was awesome. Like many people don't get that that experience. You know, um that's a major a major thing about life that, that 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 I need to just think about. Like many people ain't walk, you know, ain't walk the journey I walk. Ain't do the things I did because of my heart, because my determination got me far, far. Got me far. Got me to make plays that many people would never be able to make. Um. Well. Let me not say never, because if anybody works hard, they can take make some plays. Um, yeah, but still, you made some crazy plays. I mean, the Auburn catch, I'm watching it right now in the background, the Florida catch, the catch against Tennessee. You had some superior skills that let, – let's honor them. Let's, let's celebrate them right now. You don't, you don't need to be humble here with me, sir. We, we, we're, 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 this is about celebrating you, Birdman. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, man, uh, like I said, man, I, I'm just this humble in the jungle guy, man. Because, like I said, in the beginning, a lot of people, you know, don't, 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 can't do this, but they can do it if they work as hard. Yeah. Or if they do the things that, that's, if they do the things that, that's, that they just to succeed. They will succeed. They will make plays that I made. It's just I was determined. So that's probably why it, it looked like that. Sir. Oh, 100%. You could, you could spot the determination from way off. Like, you wanted to make a name for yourself. Like, this is the time. Exactly. And you came out of nowhere to a lot of people. And that's how a right. lot of some of the greatest LSU players are. You know, Joe Burrow, Clyde, Edward Zolaire. You know, some of these yeah. guys came out of completely nowhere, and you are just like them. You are in that top tier for me. Yeah, I can, I can, I can you know, I, I can, I can um, agree to that. I can test to that. Uh, I did come out of nowhere because, like, no one was expecting to see a number two out on the field catching the, you know, catching passes. Uh, uh, That's another thing you started, sir. The, the wearing of the number two for receivers. Everyone has copied you since then. Yeah. Uh, Justin Jefferson, I, I like the way he did in that. He, he held it down pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, the tight end who had it on, too. I forgot his name. Eric. Eric, Eric Gilbert. Something. Yeah, Eric Gilbert had it on. Um, I, I just wish they would have threw um, Eric Gilbert more passes. Me, too. But, uh, but, um, uh, 
Yeah, they they was all rapping it, and I was trying to get them to do the Birdman sign, but they wouldn't do it because, like I told you before, they thought it was a gang or something like that. It was not a gang. Wow. It, it was for a Birdman. That that's what it was. Because, like you said, anybody know me? They know I was not gang affiliated or nothing like that. Yeah, no way. I mean, so, you're the Birdman. You don't need a gang. You, you you walk around. You are you are a gang just by yourself, my man. Like you, I like that. You I call like the that. shots. I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, yeah. There is one. Like there is one part of the 2017 that people don't really talk about. But you guys had Gary Croton, the future BYU head coach, as your offensive coordinator. And I like to feel that that 2007 offense was probably our most attack-minded offense before yes. before that 2019 team with Joe Burrow. Do you feel that same way? Like yes, yes, without a doubt. Shout out to Gary Croton. Man, Croton was a whiz. Uh, man, I love Croton's offense. He was one of those guys that would spread it out, throw the ball. You know, everybody talk about Joe Brady, mm-hmm. but they forgot about Gary Croton. Gary Crow and Kane was one of the first ones that came with the spread. You know, Kane was just throwing that ball, airing it out. Um, man, yeah, man, Gary Crow. Oh, uh, man, it, it was because of Les Miles wanted to run, 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 run. Wanted to run in, in the eight-man, nine-man front. Like, come on, coach, what you doing? <laughs> spread it out, let throw that rock. We got all these receivers. You got me. You got Ernie Doucette, you got Brennan LaFell, you got Terrence Tolliver, Jerry Mitch, Jerry, um, what is it, Jerry Mitchell, Richard Dixon, and then you got the, man, you had all these studs at receiver, and you didn't want to throw the ball, you kept trying to run. I understand we had Jacob Hester, who was a beast, we had Keelan Williams, who was a beast. Uh, we had Trina Holiday, who was a beast. Uh, Richard Murphy, who also was a beast. But you had all these studs at, at Wild Out, man. We should have, like, broke records. Yeah. We should have broke records. Because that offense was all glass, man. It was all glass, I tell you. Well, looking at the numbers, I mean, it's like, okay, if, if these guys had been given more opportunities, they're they're putting up 15 to 20 touchdowns each. Like... Like and that goes for you. It goes for early yeah. Doucette. and you still put yeah. up eleven touchdowns that season. I believe it was. Right. Yeah, I put up. I, I led the team in in, in touchdowns in two thousand seven. Yeah, it was it, like that was crazy. Yeah, you got how seven I, and then four. Oh, sorry. Yeah. How can I? How can I lead a team and I'm just getting there and I just had started starting after the fourth game. After the fourth game and I led the team in touchdowns. That's crazy. I, well, I led the um, receivers in touchdowns. That was crazy. Well, in um, every fifth catch you made, you were scoring a touchdown as well. <laughs> 35 catches, seven touchdowns. Yeah. Every fifth catch you were scoring for LSU. You know, I never looked at that like that. I never, never paid attention to that. Like, that was awesome. Well, now's the time after you've after you've wow. tr- you've tried to be humble for so many years, Demetrius. Now it's time to kind of let the swag out, kind of enjoy it. Yeah, now it's time to let the <laughs> yeah, like wow, now every, it's time to let the swag out. Wow. Every every five catches you scored for that LSU 2007 title winning team in an offense that ran the ball four out of five times. Right. Right. Let that right. sink in, my man. That's that's your history. That's what you've created here at LSU. That's your legacy. And I want to share that with the next generation of LSU fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that man. And the thing about it, it came so natural. It came like, you know, like no other. You know, it came like, it came like, it came like no, no, nobody else would ever do it. But they can do it. Mr. Jackson, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They can do it. Oh, God. Because, it. because <laughs> they can do it if they just put their hearts and their mind to it. 
and that's what I did. I put my heart and my mind to it, and I was, man, I, you should have seen me when we had 110s. You know, I'm running 110s, and I never did this before, but I'm running 110s, and I'm on time. You know, um, I was tired, back was hurting, but I still got through it. Um, it was it was awesome, man. It was awesome. And <laughs> no gloating on myself. I keep on talking about myself. Uh, you know, that's hard to talk about yourself sometimes. I know. Um, I, but you're doing well, though. Yeah, oh, man. You know, uh, the person who really, you know, who, who really makes me feel like I was the man, hands down, it was Ryan Perlou. Wow. Ryan, every time I talk to Ryan, he's telling me, man, Bird, man, Bird, man, I see, I, I, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching the game right now. I'm doing this right now. Arara, arara. <laughs> like, I'm like, man, all right, Ryan, all right, all right. But he just tells me and, and, and fit me in and let me know how much, it, how, how, you know, how much it was to play with me. You know, like wow. to, 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 to throw me a pad. He said, man, Bert, you one of my guys, man. You one of my guys. You my brother, dog. You my brother. That's why you got to come um, back to Louisiana, man. Everybody's wanting to see you again. Yeah, I do. I, I need to come back. I want to come back. I want to come back. Um, you know you're invited to every single LSU practice, too. Every former Tiger is has, is officially invited to every single practice as well and a tour of really? the facility. If you showed up to Tiger Stadium, to the athletic building, sir, you would have purple and gold carpet being rolled out. You would have everything at your disposal. They'd be treating you like gold because you, sir, are a Tiger legend. And, you know, the last coach here at LSU didn't really do that for the for the past LSU Tigers. They didn't really like to honor the guys. Hey, I know Coach O. Coach O honored a yes. lot of the past guys. And, uh, yeah, I know Coach O did. He, 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 he's one of them uh, cool guys. It's going to continue in the next coach as well, I, I'm telling you. And yeah. What was it like being coached by Les Miles at LSU, the, the coach before Coach Ed Orgeron? Uh, what you said, what was it like being coached to, by Les Miles? Yeah, by having him uh, be your head coach. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was okay. It, it wasn't the best. He was a good guy. I want to say per se, he um, he he was uh, he loved to run the ball. And me being a receiver, that, that was kind of like hard for me to get down with him because um. Uh, he never did want to listen to me when I said, hey, coach, man, look, I'm open, blah, blah, blah. He think I'm trying to be selfish. I wasn't trying to be selfish. I was just letting you know, coach, hey, I'm open. You know, especially that 2008 season. We had a red shirt freshman quarterback, and it's like, yo, coach, I'm open. Throw me the ball. He had to, he had, um, he had Jerry Lee look the other way every time. Like, why would you do something like that just because, oh, Bird? Bird thinks it's all about him or Bird did. No, Bird trying to help the team win. Exactly. No wonder Jarrett Lee so, threw so many interceptions that year. Exactly, exactly. And none of those pick sixes came my way. So so I, I need people to understand. Like, how the heck am I trying to be selfish when pick sixes came on opposite receiver side? He never tried to, like, throw me passes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, it's just... It was just, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it was, I'm trying to find a word to use, but mm. I, I don't know, you know, which word I should use because I, I don't want to sound, you know, it's okay. uh, selfish or nothing like that. But, it, does, it doesn't sound selfish. But I, I know one thing is, one thing for show and two things for certain. I wanted to repeat as a national champion, and I wanted to win a political. When I said that I wanted to win a political award, 
that's another thing I think that's another reason why I think my numbers dropped drastically. Because I said that I wanted to win a Balenci call and it, it, it kind of sounds like I'm being selfish or something like that. I said I want to win the Balenci call and I want to win that championship. You know, so it was, it was kind of like selfish to some of the viewers or some people. To, to be honest, Mr. Jackson, I don't care what people think because I know in my head, I never wanted to be selfish. I'm never, never one of those selfish types. Hey. Even in JUCO, you know, even in JUCO, when I see other receivers dropping passes, doing this and doing that, you know, I go to them, I tell them, hey, come on, man, we got to make this pass, we got to make this catch, we got to do this, we got to do that. But then also I go to the quarterback and I let them know, like, yo, if you're going to keep dropping the ball, throw the ball to me because I'm going to catch it. I'm going to make sure I do what I need to do, you know, and, and, and that's the way of life right now. You know, I'm, I'm making sure that I do what I need to do, you, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's just so, I'm so thankful, you know, for this, you know, this interview because I haven't talked like this in, in a long time. Like I, I haven't. Really? And, and this is, this, yeah. I haven't talked like this. I haven't talked about my memories, my accolades, in 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 in, in months. Well, sir, I've been I've been like I've been in the dark, you know, like, and you bring me out that darkness to the light. Really? You know, and I, I, yes, and I really appreciate that. And man, sir, it, 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 yeah, you're you're you're. This is unbelievable. Are you what? Out of the dark into the light. What what's going on? Uh, because uh, I just felt like no one cared, you know, about me. No one, no one cares about you know my my, my football playing career. Everybody wants me to forget about that and uh, you know move on, uh, do something else, be great in something else. So it's like, uh, how can I be great in something else when I was great in one thing? Let me be a personal trainer. Let me try home my own business. Let me try and do this and do that. Let me try and be a motivational speaker. Let me try and do that. People tell me, oh, no, man, you need to do something else. Forget about the football stuff. No. It, it, that's over with. That's over with. People, people don't care about you. People don't care about, is it, is it what have you done for me lately? So that's why I look at LSU like, man, they forgot about me. I would feel that way, too. It, yeah. I, I totally understand where you're coming from. And, I want you to know something right ahead. You have set the bar, sir. Let me explain something. When you came out in 2008, after winning a national championship, catching seven touchdowns, you caught a touchdown in every single big game for LSU, except for the title game where your, you know, your route running completely opened up Richard Dixon in that yes. game, which, which won us that game. But um, you, you come into that next year and you say, I want to win the Bolitnikoff. And do you, know, do you know how much that has influenced future LSU receivers? Because almost every single year, from Terrace Marshall to Kayshawn Butte to Jamar Chase, who won it, to, to, to all these other guys, Justin Jefferson, what do they say when they come into the year? They say, I am aiming to win the Bolitnikoff. And guess what? It's not viewed as selfish. It's viewed as ambitious. I, I'm so sorry that, right. that you were viewed as selfish at that time because yeah. that is not what you were doing. You were ambitious. Uh, and, and because I like to, you know, back when I was tailgating because I wanted to have fun with the fans or because I felt like the fans really, you know, took me in. Most of the fans, like I tell you, more of the fans that I did hang out with in, in, in Baton Rouge, man, they, they showed me so much love. It it, it 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 was it was awesome how much love the fans showed me. It's it's the university itself who I felt like, man, they just forgot about me. Because I went there and I tried to get a job there and they turned me down. Really? And, uh, yes. I tried to work there and they turned me down. Yeah. And everybody was like, Oh, why you go work for that shoe? Why don't you do this? Man, I tried. Wow, I what, tried. what job were you trying to get for L with LSU? Was this with the football team? Yes, I was trying to work in the football program and a recruit because I know how to recruit. Yeah, I, I know I know what true talent looks like, you know. 
because I was one of those true talented receivers. So I know what true talent looks like. I know what we need. I know what we need to to succeed. And I I seen it. You know, I, I see it this year. You know, I seen it last year when we the COVID year. We could have had a better year. You know, it was COVID. We could have had a better year. We could have went better than the five and the five. That's because coach didn't look at the players right. He didn't use the right players. You know, he he, he just gave up on them. That's true. I I I and, I think you should not give up on that at all because the the coaching staff's about to change. There's going to be a whole lot of turnover. The, Scott Woodward, our athletic director, needs yeah. people who love LSU. He needs people who are there for you know for the, some with fresh eyes, you know. And you would be someone with yeah. with, with a new perspective on everything for the Tigers. Yeah. Uh, now you know I, I love I love LSU. I love LSU, and uh, I just, I just wish they, they, they would love me back the same way, like that, because I love them. Like that's my school. I love my Pearl River Wildcats. I love them too. Um, in school, my, 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 my um, high school. I love my high school also. Well, we're not gonna let you be forgotten by LSU. This interview is gonna be going all over the place, sir. Oh man. Hey, oh man, we don't we don't have the greatest reach or the greatest platform like ESPN or something, but we're getting pre- we're getting pretty high up there, and I, I'm loving okay. every minute of it, sir. I'm just okay. Just one last question. Um, well, actually, two more. I like to I'd like to follow this one up, but this this one first. What was your reaction to the news or allegations re- regarding uh, Les Miles, your former head coach? What's the news? Hello? Hello? Hello, hey. Um, yeah, what, what was your reaction to the news or allegations regarding your former head coach, Les Miles? Oh, like, what you talking about? Oh, maybe you didn't hear, but Les Miles... No, I didn't hear about that. He had, there's allegations that Les Miles uh, committed sexual assault against uh, numerous women, including female students... Um, females wow. who he hired as recruiting hostesses, um, women in those type of situations, really young women, and he he he's accused of sexual assault from various uh, various women in, involved in this. Wow. Well, my comment to that is I don't know nothing about that, and I'm continuing to tell you I don't know nothing about that. That's crazy. That's wild. Um, I never looked at him as a man that do something like that. Like I just knew coach as as as, as you know as Miles. Yeah. As, as 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 my boy. I never knew he was doing nothing crazy like that. That's crazy. Well, yeah, the the news kind of died down after a bit, but it was a it was a big story about three or four months ago. And just the final question, sir. Um, Demetrius, where are you at right now? Where where are you at? Um, how are you feeling? How is like what are, what are your what are your aspirations? Your ambitions? What do you think? What do you have plotting next for your life? Uh, that's a big question. Yeah. Um, what am, where am I at right now? Right now, I'm at a stage where I'm trying to get on my feet. Um, right now, like I told you, I'm in Dallas. And um, I, I'm trying to get a job, or get a career job in sales. Uh, I wish I was in Louisiana doing this job or something like that. But uh, hey, it is what it is. This is where you know the door opened up at, open up for me at. And um, currently at, at this at this point in time, I do not have a place to call my home. You know, so. Many people call it homeless, right? So, kind of like, I don't like talking about that because I I really rather for people to wonder where I'm at than me tell them where I'm at. But I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just a, a, like you'd be a young boy. I'm just a lonely child trying to figure it out. I'm right there with you, man. I But at the same time, 
we're going to put this out everywhere and we are going to we are going to make sure this has some sort of impact for you in a positive way sir we have to help you i am going to make okay. i'm going to make it my goal to help you in any way i can i did not even believe that this was about to happen that this could become such a such a even bigger thing than just an interview but um I believe in I believe in certain weird things in life where certain things happen for a reason, and I think um, uh -huh. I added you on Facebook at a random moment today for a reason. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hey, uh, I'm thankful for you doing that. Um, like I said, thank you, and, uh, and I'm not I'm not one of those that like to share, you know, my background and, and talk about myself because like. I look at a lot of people and a lot of people be like, man, what have you done for us lately? You know, yeah. you, you haven't done nothing for us and, and this and that. So I'm just, I'm just alone. I do have my family, you know, I have my mother, my little sister, you know, they, they, they conversate with me most of the time. My brother talks to me sometimes, but then, you know, he's one of the ones that, that, that want me to forget about football. Forget about, forget about, you know, me playing football. I, I'm trying to tell him, like, man, I, I forgot about football. Hey, I'm 35 years old. I don't want to play football no more. I've been, been not want to play football no more. I want to be a trainer. That's, I want to be a fitness trainer. That's, that's what I feel like, you know, will get me motivated. You want to stay around the game. Exactly. You want, I want a job to be a again? commentator, a sport analyst on my own radio show, doing some things like that. You know, I, I see Derrick Beck with the Marlon Faye right. They're doing um, they're doing some um, some radio stuff. I want mind doing some things like that. Like, I, man, that that looks like is is awesome. I think you. Like awesome. I think you would be fantastic for the role, and I I want to put this out so we can get we're gonna get some something coming your way, sir. I guarantee it. You know the light is coming down the tunnel. Positive things are just around the corner. I I I know it's coming, sir. Demetrius, I am completely honored to to talk to you to tell your story, and I'm gonna be checking in on you every single day, my man. Is that all right if I? text you at this number still yes it's cool all right demetrius birdman seriously thank you so much for, for for speaking with me and i cannot wait to put this out lsu fans are going to love hearing from you and i expect um certain things to be coming your way um i'm gonna i'm gonna say it right here if anybody has any opportunities or anything that they may be able to help Birdman out with. Hit yeah. us up. Hit us up right here on this video. When when yeah. when we post it, hit us up at yeah. lsuodyssey.com. Hit Demetrius Bird up at Facebook. Get in touch with this with this amazing Tiger legend, and and let's 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 help him. Let's help oh, this man. amazing Tiger legend get back on his feet because he deserves it. He deserves to be back at LSU in some capacity, whether that's coaching, training. We need to make it happen. I like that. I like <laughs> that. That that man, that's, that's awesome. And uh, man, I thank you for even giving me the opportunity to tell my story. Like I told you before, man. Like I never, not never, in some months, I haven't talked about myself. I've been real quiet. All I've been talking about is my problems. Yeah. And, and my problems kind of ran all my friends away. Hey, because I've been I there. Felt like, I feel like don't nobody want to listen to me. They don't want to listen to what's going on. They want to hear the positive side of Bird. You know, uh, where, where's Bird at? Where's D-Bird at? Because he, he, he's going somewhere. We need to bring him up out that shell. And, um, and I just thank you for letting me even talk about that, man. You're going to have me going to sleep good tonight. I had a good workout. Um, now I know the sky's the limit. It is. The sky's the limit. Hey, I'm, I'm in a spot where I'm still thinking, you know, I might, I'll probably never get to the, to the, to the goals I want. I'll Hey man, it's going to happen. 
because where I was at just a year ago, if I saw where I'm at right now, I would, I wouldn't believe it. And so it's, it's a, it's a step-by-step process. You've been through this. You, you grinded through every summer camp playing football, you know, the hard work things take, this is going to be gravy for you. All, all you have to do is just, is just put one foot in front of the other and just follow the doors as they open, sir, because we're going to put this out and I think some doors are going to open. Okay. Okay. And, and I'm waiting on those doors. <laughs> I'm waiting on those doors and like, I'm going to stay grounded. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I get, I get, um, I get down, you know, I feel like life is, life is not like it used to be. Um, it used to be all fun. And, you know, I had times where, you know, I could laugh and, and, and crack jokes. And now it's like, I had to be so stuck up because people didn't like me cracking jokes and stuff like that. People don't like for me to smile. Well, that's changing now. You were going to be making you smile all the time as much as we can, my man, because you're the bird man and you deserve that. You are an LSU legend. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, dude. Like, I, I really, we got to do something. I, I'm going to put this out immediately, sir. And, um, we got to stay in contact, Birdman. I'm going to be keeping up with you all the time if you if you if you'll let me. Oh man, I, I I love that. All right, Birdman. You have a wonderful rest of your night. We'll be talking to you soon, my man. All right, thanks. Hey, thank you, brother. Be safe. Be very careful. And and if you need us in any way, shape, or form, do not hesitate. All right, all right. I appreciate that. All right. No problem, Birdman. We'll be talking to you soon. All right, thanks. Peace out, brother. Wow.